Heat drafting is at its most effective when you're doing a 3v3 team draft, and it's at its least effective if you need to win your pod, because making one person's draft worse at the expense of your own draft is not worth it at all. A lot of times I'll even like pass good cards pretty late in pack one because I want to send good signals, I want to like let the person to the left of me know, like, no, really, this, this color is open. Which isn't to say that you should never hate draft, but... Mm. A lot of folks would be better off if they, if they never did it. Especially in league play. It doesn't make any fucking sense, right? Anyway. Just a completely different game. Ooh, Shinobi. This is really good. This would be great. I want to shinobi someone, though. I want to play with their cards and make them sad. Coming. I mean, just because I got past a Misty Rainforest with, like, no other good cards in the pack doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to be drafting Bug. This this will be different. This will be Bug with a good mana base. We just drafted Bug with a bad mana base. This will be a completely different deck. Completely, it'll be night and day, folks. You won't even be able to... Didn't we trophy with Bug yesterday? We totally tro That was one of the two decks we trophied with. It was just, like, Sultai Sludge. It's not thrilling though. I'll just take Boros Signet and go a different direction with it. The other option is like Casualties of War. draft, I'm 70% drafting bug decks. Well, your feeling is incorrect. It's not even 50%. Oh, shit, what up? Hey, Fekalo. It's the sub. It's the 14 months there. He is one of my favorite uh, archetypes, though. One of my favorite strats. I do like grinding people down with a mixture of discard and counters and removal. Forty percent. Forty percent's closer. Still probably a little high. Well, that's definitely not true. Never didn't have it. If I didn't have a thought seize, I wouldn't be like trying to construct a good mana base here or whatever. Also, if we'd seen like good reanimator cards after our pack one pick one, like we'd been past a girl's brand or whatever. We'd have a very different shell going on here. Mm, but we didn't. We got past Durfee value cards and bug lands. That's, that's what I'm doing now. I'm not pack one pick winning Thoughtseize to go like mono black, right? So like, what else, I what else am I doing here? White black is also fine, but we didn't really see a reason to go into white black, except for maybe that balance, but we didn't really have a balance start. We'd already taken the Fallen Shinobi and the Mystine. Arlie Puff says that they feel at least in 70% of my drafts I take Magic the Gathering cards instead of Pokemon cards. That is actually true. I do that in at least 70% of my drafts. Yeah, most people don't notice that. Let's take the Cobra. Avengers is a great win con, and if you end up with like prime time in this, then it would look really good. But we have a fetch already. We could do good things. 
Hmm. Maybe we're more green black, unless Soul Tie, huh? Go heavier green. Turn one Thought Seize, turn two Lotus Cobra, and turn three Natural Order. Get a Trigon Predator! The deck's finished! Half a pack deck right here! Are there situations outside of combo where I'd be happy to take a Lotus Petal? That's an interesting question. If you're playing cards that like really reward you for playing them a turn early, Lotus Petal starts to look good. So like, people play draw sevens outside of decks that are just straight combo. And playing draw sevens a turn earlier is kind of nice. We're not a pod deck, are we? We could be. I think I'm supposed to take the days, even though we're not necessarily playing blue. Days and we the smokestack. Hey Zodiac Brave, it's the 19 months. Trigon Predator! Yeah. I don't know if y'all could see it. I need to have a slow-mo re replay for my cam, but I definitely just gleeked all over my keyboard. Hey, my name is Mud, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 13 months. Am I back on my 80% Sultai drafting? God damn it. No! I don't draft it that much! I do like Sultai. I can't believe I'm being attacked like this. Let's get Smuggler's Copter in here. That's a fine one to like... Have flying. Ooh. <laughs> Nature's Claim also an option. We're playing Natural Order on the Land War Elves, huh? You can Gleek on command. Uh, Gleek! Gleek, Zodiac Brave! Do it now! Was that commanding enough? Do I draft a bug at least once per cube season? I do. I do. It's good for my digestion. So Jay's Time Warp and Blue Marsh are the three that really appeal to me. The best natural order card here is, of course, the Devoted Druid. Just ramps us into it faster. Potentially the pick. It doesn't crew the copter, but not every card we grab needs to crew the copter. Jace plays really well with the Thought Seas and the Casualties of War. You have some nice ones to flash back. But if we are playing Natural Order, we only want so many non green creatures in our deck. Yeah, let's take Druid. We're not 100% even still be blue here, is one way to think about it. I do like Solemn. Glen and pretty messed up. Maybe I should take Glen. Pack Rat's kind of sweet. Hey, easy peasy. Thanks to the Salt. Thanks the 39 months. My least drafted three color combo. Probably Mardu. I drafted sometimes, but. Hey, Moltu. Thanks to the Salt. Thanks to the 13 months. Let me take this Glen. Well, it's not good against everybody, but it's so filthy in some matchups. We're gonna be the three color Rafello stacks deck, is that what this is? I think a lot of people take Goose over Carry Tid. Goose plays better with the, the Shinobi. I prefer carry it a lot more, but I think I just talked myself into the goose. Ooh. A reason to be Sultai Sludge. Who takes goose over carry -tid? Most people. <laughs> I imagine. I see way more gooses than carry tids across from me, so I assume that most people are valuing it more. Where are the giant fucking green creatures? We're getting these late Rafelloses and Natural Orders. 
Someone's fucking fast cutting me. Trophy's fine though. When does Uro get banned from Vintage Cube? I don't think ever. I think Uro is perfect in this format. Oh yeah, Big Joe back. I don't remember the Primus. I remember the Progenitus, which I'm not that concerned about. I'm talking like Terastodon or... Did I say something about a good mana base this time? Yeah! It'll happen. We have some nice universal fixers. Goose, Lotus Cobra. A good fetch and a good duel. Blues of blue and black are like fairly light right now too. Probably be grabbing the Garakrill on this. I'm tempted by the control magic. I feel like Garakrill on this is really good if your opponents, if you're like in a Man and Dork mirror. I feel like control magic is really good against decks that are actually like good against me. Atarko is an option for natural order, but it's not. Oh, there we go. The issue with Atarka is that it's uh. I don't, I don't really want to add red to the mana base. Control Magic's double blue. Uro's already double blue. Nice Blooming March wield arm. Primetime helps a lot. Now we just need like one big top end card for Natural Order. And then prime time's like a fine plan B in case you drop your draw your top end card. But the natural order is close to being decent. Yeah, Glenn's kinda double blue. It's not really, but it kind of is. I think I want Bloodstained Mire to pair with the uh, the Overgrown Tomb. It's also another fetch for Lotus Cobra. It's kinda nice. Chance I play Yogmoth's Will. I don't think there's a chance I play any of these cards. Noise. Play that fucking thing, though. Yeah, this deck's starting to look decent. Throw an underground scene here. Maybe a cultivate. Rested on. Maybe a little bit of power. Time Walker or Recall would go a long ways. Yeah, we have an Overgrown Tomb, so, like, we don't need to buy you that much. A Tropical would be nice. Tropical or Underground Sea or both. Soaring? Yeah, soaring into gas. Come on, pack three. Give us something. Give us something worth playing. Give us something to win with. Hmm. Well, there's none of those things that I wanted. Sanctum doesn't really fix the deck. It doesn't really fix our mana base that well. It's not an island we can return with days. It's not a forest for Rufellos. I'd almost rather take like the remand of the Garrick. I think take Garrick here. I think Garrick fits our curve really well, really nicely. It's like this middle stepping value card that also ramps us to our top end. The Garrick can also like turn a single blue source into double blue, that sort of thing. 
No love for Cloudscape? No. <laughs> if I could draft Cloudscape for free, it would rot in my sideboard. I would not... It would not be the 23rd playable in this deck. Now I think I want that Cultivate. A lot of nice weak potential wheels here. Windswept Teeth, Consecrated Sphinx, and Maelstrom Pulse. We'll all be solid, but I think I want this Cultivate. It double fixes, it ramps. Puts a card in the graveyard for Uro. You know, all good things. It's not like Cloudscape's a bad card. It's not like it would be, like, terrible in a lot of different decks. I most want to play Cloudscape when I'm short on two drops and I have, like, blink effects and stuff. Our deck just doesn't look anything like that. I wasn't trying to imply that it was, like, some terrible card or whatever. It just doesn't belong in every deck, I don't think. I guess we take Witness. It's got some stuff to do in this deck. Hmm. These are not the duels I wanted. Steam Vents would, like, let Bloodstained Mire get an island. I think I'm just grabbing Sylvan Library. Interesting. Guy's Cradle doesn't make much sense in this deck. It's good with, like, Near Battle Sphere, and that's about it. Frost Titan would be solid. I think we're just gonna take the Fintorn Elves. Now there's a good Natural Order target. And just like that, our deck kind of works. We don't actually have to play that many swamps. I guess I do if I if I want Bloodstained Mire to have multiple targets, but right now Black is looking like a real light splash. Ooh, Verdant. Oh, Scarab God. I think this is a great Scarab God deck. We have a whole bunch of sweet creatures worth rebuying. I think I'd take the Verdant Catacombs though. I scared that a lot. Oh well. This is a jammer. I should really be adding tracks I like to my funk playlist. I just added this one. I actually really like this Brainstorm. I like the Fatal Push too. They're both like really nice, efficient cards to fill up the graveyard for Uro or like rebuy with Eternal Witness. I think with three fetch lands, Brainstorm looks really good. We do already have Sylvan Library, so maybe we don't need it. Spiral here. Hey, and large of Mystics of the sub, these are 28 months. Oh, I'll save the name Sanctum. trophy contender it could be it might come down to like matchups but we have good mana we've got some nice disruption there's just not a lot of it 
Our deck's also a little underpowered, right? Like, there's, you know, there's no, like, Moxin and Soul Rings and stuff. Could have used, like, a Mind Twist or something. Mana Drain, maybe. I, I don't know. Some power adjacent cards. You think I should have grabbed the Taiga? I probably should have. Make the Bloodstained Mire a lot better. Mire can already fetch green with the Overgrown Tomb, but right now if I only play one Swamp, then it only has one, like two cards that it can fetch. I think I'm gonna play two Swamps. If I wanna play the Casualties of War. <clears throat> I like the Smuggler's Copter and the Trigon Predator for the Fallen Shinobi. I was thinking about cutting the days. Oh shit, what up? Board it back in against like the ramp mirror so you hit their top end stuff or, or combo. Really not something I want to top deck here. I don't want to be bouncing my lands very often either. I guess Uro puts extra lands into play. Hey, Quacks, Quacks, thanks to the sub, thanks to 47 months. Cutting days, like, we don't have blue duels, right? We don't have the islands. There's only gonna be a couple islands in this fucking deck. Quacks says 47 months, that's 26 six months more than 21 months! That's some fancy math there, Quacks. Yeah, exactly. Normally I'm not a big fan of Gilded Goose, but I do have Fallen Shinobi. We actually took Gilded Goose over a Sylvan Carry Tid, which I am a fan of, but... That was why. The Shinobi consideration. Cut Glenn? No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> if you're cutting Glenn, then you, like, you might as well just be... Mono Green, right? Magic's hard. I do think this deck could get away with playing like 15 lands pretty easily. We could cut the Casualties of War and the Thoughtseize, and then we're not playing Bloodstained Mire, and then we just have the one Swamp, and then you're just like splashing for Maelstrom Pulse, Assassin's Trophy, and Fallen Shinobi, which is probably fine. Thoughtseize is so good though. It's such an unreasonable magic card. And with all these ramp, all this ramp casualties of war is actually really good too. We can revive with eternal witness. Like gives us this fine like plan B of grinding them out. Maybe I am supposed to cut control magic. I feel like we're gonna be boarding in control magic like every single fucking round though. We could cut trophy maybe since we picked up the maelstrom pulse. I don't think maelstrom pulse is much better. Yeah, maybe Maelstrom Pulse and Casualties of War is better. We'll just play like the more the more high-powered removal spells. Since we all have all this ramp. You don't think I need Garrick? I bet I want Garrick. There's a difference between need and want. I admit. But I want that Garrick pretty bad. Yeah, I feel like cutting Thoughtseize is super wrong, especially with like Eternal Witness to rebuy it, but maybe maybe it should maybe it should go. Yeah, right, clone? I feel the same way. You wanna cut Smuggler's Copter? We could do that. I like Smuggler's Copter a lot. I like it with Fallen Shinobi, I like it with Uro. We could cut it. It's not like the deck falls apart if we cut it. 
Actually, if I was gonna cut like a reconning flyer, I think Trigon Predator goes before Copter goes. Like turn one, you could play a dork, turn two, Copter plus another dork, and then turn three, you just have a Shinobi. Well, I'm certainly not gonna... If I want flyers for Fallen Shinobi, I'm certainly not gonna cut Gilded Goose over Trigon Predator or Copter, right? Yeah, there is a lot of stuff that crews the Copter, too. I'll look for it to do here. Oh shit, what up? You wanna cut Elves of Deep Shadow? I actually don't hate that. Card kinda sucks. I feel weird cutting Mana Dorks in my Crater Hope Behemoth deck. Cut the turnabout. Oh, that's the, that's the actual right. I think what I'm gonna do is go to the bathroom real quick. Go to the bathroom and think about these here cuts here. And then when I come back, I'll just be like, oh, I know to cut. It'll be real easy. Hey, Schnapp 6 of the Saldings for 35 months. Oh man, and just like that, I know exactly what to cut. No, I have no fucking idea. The issue is that I think we have to cut the Bloodstained Mire. We're only playing one Swamp. It is really nice to have fetch lands with Uro and Sylvan Library and Brainstorm and Lotus Cobra. Yeah, I'll, I'll just play it anyway. It'll be aight. Is two islands enough, or do we want more? This is like four blue sources before you get into, like, Cultivate, Lotus Cobra, Gilded Goose action. Right now we're at 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 green. Which is pretty good. Meyer does still get two. Meyer has two fetchables. I am still playing Maelstrom Pulse. There's a Maelstrom Pulse and a Fallen Shinobi in here that I'm still playing. Yeah, we can adjust if we need to be grindy or post-board. Can certainly adjust. There's gonna be some matchups where like control magic's MVP, and there's other matchups where Glenn's MVP, and like you just like shave the other one. I mean matchups where Trigon Predator's uncuttable and others where it's like not very good. Hey Master Core Slayer, thanks for the sub. Sub for tier one at six months in advance. Oh my. How many black sources do you need for turn one Thoughtseize? Yeah, if we were, I mean, if we were playing Thoughtseize in this deck, we wouldn't be playing it to turn one it, right? Because we want to play a Mana Dork on one every every game. So if you're playing Thoughtseize on this, in this deck, you're playing it on like turn three or something. Whether you have the black mana on turn one or not. And it's not still, it's still not bad there, but you know, your aggro opponents have already dumped their hand by then. So that's why I ended up cutting it. The cards that we are playing are all cards that are like really good off the top. Our blue cards are all really good off the top. Like after we've dumped our hand, we can top deck any of these cards and they're all good. Building a deck, right? We're building a deck, not just putting like the 40 best cards in a vacuum without any synergy with each other. Is that a tankard I'm drinking out of? It is! This is a 
tankard with the longest johns. Yeah. Some longest johns merch. They are a uh, group that sings sea shanties. We played them on stream a few times. They're Twitch friendly. They are frustratingly not very YouTube friendly. But that's not their fault. Just impacts how much I can play them. If I want to be able to upload the VODs to YouTube. Titan, and then no answer to control magic. That's my ideal from their end. If they just play like some planeswalkers, the, the control magic's not gonna be as good. I'm not familiar with Cornelius now. mana, including a blue. Crisis for three. Copter here. I have to put a counter on the Devoted Druid and burn my food. The next turn I can make a food. Next turn I could cast Hoof. That wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't be enough to attack for lethal with. Certainly Crewcopter, and I'll show you how next turn. Control Magic is not a 4-mana ramp spell here, it's like a 4-mana annex, right? Because I'm stealing their ramp spell at the same time. It's like a removal spell and a ramp spell bundled together. And then it's going to be like buffing my shit with Crater Hoof. Copter, but I think I just grab a fellow or grab a prime time now, huh? We could natural order free turtle witness, rebuy the control magic. Prime time's just better.
We're not going to be bringing back Euro this game, I don't think. Something would have to go disastrously wrong for us to bring back Euro this game. I also don't think we're hurting for Euro food. We might care about the life from having to crack random fetches, though. insane. I've seen a lot of good Vorn Clixes. I think that's the best Vorn Clix I've ever had, and it was not mine. <laughs> that's, that's so absurd. Alright, I guess I, I guess I have infinite mana on. Didn't, didn't think that was how this game was going, but whatever. Control magic seems amazing. Glenn does not. Uro does not. Yeah, Vorn Clix has an envo with your own Dota Druid, for sure. <laughs> Steed. The awkward thing is I have to run two islands if I want to play the control magic. I guess I don't, like, need to, need to, but I want to. How would I rank Living Death in the cube? Living Death is really good in a deck where you're building around Living Death. It's kind of the same in all cubes. It's not really different in this one.
We literally just did that, the Ziggs. We literally just got infinite mana with Devoted Druid because our opponent played a Boring Clicks. It was good. I don't regret cutting a forest. I could see it. Double Island, Double Swamp. I could see some rough draws. Sorry you just tuned in. I'm also sorry you just tuned in. Where you been? Why are you having any semblance of a life outside of watching me? That's what I want to know. Why would you hurt my feelings like that exactly? Fucking okay, no. Fucking prime time again. I almost wonder if we need to grab Whisperwood just to like gum things up. Cultivate first would not be free. Cultivate cost three. Puts one forest into play. Tapped. That gives you one more mana from River Fellows. There was a portal ramp card. It's like two mana, search your library for a forest, put it into play untapped. That one that one's free if you have River Fellows out. Because it comes into play untapped, so you can tap it for one, it costs two, and then you get one from River Fellows. That's not what Cultivate does though. Uh, I'm gonna trophy their boring clicks now. It's a little awkward if they play like a pro green sword or whatever, but I don't want them to have like some stupid counter. Rock my world. We have two mana up now? We do. Yes. <laughs> you are correct. That mana is accounted for, as you have surmised. Thanks. I don't know shit about saxophones. Nine mana. Do we ramp them into something truly nasty? Yeah, you know it, Hypo. I think the opponent's playing a crisis. That's what I think is what's happening here. I like Clowncore. <laughs> oh man. Clowncore is unique. It's interesting. Oh, hey Rip Rager, thanks for the seven months in advance there. Thanks for the 52 months total! Hell yeah. That is a berry, I was right. Nice. Well, 
one of my friends played uh, Barry Saxon in band, but it was a long time ago. Oh shit, what up? It's like 15 years since I've heard of a Barry Saxon person. Hey, fuck, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 30 months. Kinda of seems like it's gonna murder me, huh? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I've fallen for my own trap! No, it's okay. We got all of their lands, so now the Avenger can't grow their plants. It's actually... It, this is actually the best hit possible. It might be good just because, like, they're going slightly harder than me, but I don't know. It's kind of a coin flip. Exactly. Yeah, we could, we could beat two forests, but three? So unlucky. Put the forest back in. I wasn't adding another swamp for Thoughtseize. I was adding it for Casualties of War. What overlay do I use for streaming? Are you talking about the, um, the stream decker? Moto still has pod draft, yeah. I think you can draft, I, I think we could be drafting single limb right now. The issue is the downtime in between games. Try out this pernicious deed card, this so called pernicious deed. Oh shit, what up? I like that the smuggler's copter plays well with the row. Fuck magic's hard. I think we gotta mull this in the ramp mirror. We had a one drive, just like making a wolf on two would be fine. Close, huh? This ain't even like had another door I'd keep in. Sure. Oh, you're talking about my in-stream overlay. Yeah, I gotcha. I had a, a friend do that for me a while back. A fellow streamer.
This is the sort of draw where we wouldn't mind drawing Pernicious Deed, right? Just, like, answer all this shit. That's not a bad one. Kind of a gassy card, huh? We have the curve, yeah. We can even take one of their mana dorks. Feels bad after game one. It feels bad. Yeah, there's actually like eight mana dorks in here, Bubbles. <laughs> we got some uh, some weird samplers in there for sure. magic for four and clicks or whatever. I don't think you need to be an affiliate to use extensions, no. The remain is short here of activating Lumbering Falls, so I think we can safely blow it up. an eternal witness for this uh this casualties and we'll be in a good spot. Oh shit, well <laughs> I mean that could be what I want. <laughs> hey Arto2 Air, thanks for the sub thing for nine months. Glad you're enjoying the stream. Seven is fifteen, plus five is twenty, but the beast gets block. Needed like a dork here, I guess. I think we just clear Garrick past turn.
The other line is to clear Garrick and then, like, just eternal witness for casualties. Order then, let me just pass. Because we're just gonna have lethal next turn, right? Yeah, expect them to fight a 2 2. They didn't want to lose the 3 3, right? Like, there's something that's larger than a 2 2 underneath that manifest. I need to flip it up. Well, it wouldn't give me the card, Penguin. It really is whether they think there's like a 4 4 underneath the manifest that they want to play around. Zero blow up manifests, it does, right? Let me just have lethal anyway. Nine plus eight is seventeen. Yeah. just starting to figure out magic and, and trading and stuff. I got some crimp cards and I was like, oh shit, are these worth like a lot of money or whatever? And one of the older kids at the, at the shop made fun of me. I remember he was like, you know we have a crimper right back there. You want all your cards crimped? You can go nuts. <laughs> you can. <clears throat> There's a community for it, but put things in perspective. What do we have face down? Uh, they weren't creatures, it was just nonsense. It's like an assassin's trophy and something else. Professionally crimped, right, right. Why does a card shop have a crimper? I don't know. They were. It was an interesting card shop. It was like attached to a uh, a thrift store and stuff. And they had a lot of concerts and stuff there. It was kind of like three businesses stapled together, or or crimped together, if you will. Yes. I've seen these, certainly seen worse hands. Kind of wild that we will net mold five. What does crimp mean? It's like when uh, 
So sometimes boosters, like the, the, the things that seal the packs, that's the crimping machine, whatever's like slamming down to seal the packs on the end so that you have to like tear it open. And sometimes it catches the edge of the cardboard. And then when you open that pack up, you're gonna see the crimp marks. And that's what we're talking about. Fair enough. Just more fuel for the Euro. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, WAP3, thanks to the saw, thanks to the four months. over here assuming we'll draw some more blue mana for this future control magic. Brainstorm into fetch would be kind of hot. Hell yeah, TTB Chows. Got me. Down to 19 over here. New plan. Fucking sweet. If I kept the Cobra instead of the Trigon Predator, I could crack the clue now. Still just have like a bunch of like mid-range shit. Four cards in hand, they tutor a black lotus. Cracking for triple blue. The opponent's on hard for five color. Well, yeah, five color is already hard, always hard. Building that fucking mana base. He successfully made a three three trick of mage.
I was definitely not clearing Oko. <laughs> Seems like another casualty is a war matchup, huh? I don't know about the hot seas. I kind of like control, control magic and Glenn. I don't know if I want to cut either of them. What do we want to cut here? Is the Predator good? It was good that game. It's a flyer, you know, it's a flyer for Shinobi. Maybe we don't need it. It's not like we saw a bunch of, like, signets and shit. They probably don't have Trinket Mage for just Lotus, right? They probably have, like, another thing. That's still not a lot. Anyway. If we played Thoughtseize. I don't I don't hate Thoughtseize here because it is like kind of an Euro matchup. Thoughtseize and Euro play great together, obviously. The question is like what are, what, are, what are we cutting, right? What are we what are we bidding for it? Brainstorm seems great against them. Could play it as like a 41st card. I kinda hate that. We can cut Battlesphere. I think Battlesphere is good though. It's like good against Oko and stuff. I do not want to cut Glenelindra. Casualties. I just. I literally changed my mana base to get this Casualties of War in here because I think it's so good in the matchup. <laughs> I'm not, I, I am not cutting this card for a card that. Yeah. I'm debating whether I actually want or not. The Shinobi. Shinobi's so good. Let's just rock this. Co Whisperwood. They just showed me um they just showed me sweepers and stuff. I played Pyroclasm and shit. I think Whisperwood's good. These grindy value mirrors. Maybe less grindy this game. I swear, opponent, if you turn one Oko me, I'll be very sad. You don't want to do that to me. Hey, go ahead, DRC. Ooh. Emery Lotus is a hell of a combination. Turn to Inferno Titan me. What the shit was that? Oh, Shadow Skull. Okay. That could have gotten worse. They only have one card in hand. We are set up for a turn three prime time now. Maybe we've got him out of disruption. Yeah, I'm pretty glad they didn't save that Shatter Skull for a turn. Maybe they burned it because they just have more removal, though. I guess we'll find out. Triple Black gives them Coalition Relic. Okay. Okay. Opponent? Oh, they did have a thing. They did have a fucking thing. I'm gonna brainstorm now. 
even though I'm not shuffling until next turn. Hopefully you can understand why. playing Shinobi next turn. Probably just gonna run out prime time. We'll see. If I could be any legendary creature, who would it be? Oh, Emrakul. Sounded like it was recorded from a from a vinyl. It was all like, scratchy and stuff. It was intentional. It's hard to tell. Jazz can get pretty experimental. Fish raid I spy. What's up, Seth? Hope you had a good stream. We're just chilling here with some vintage cube. Some vintage cube and some jazzy tunes. Playing for a trophy now. Can be decent. Any of my viewers that are not familiar with MTG Goldfish should 100% throw them a follow. lot of very original content, a lot of good stuff. As a fellow content creator, I'm jealous of the amount that, uh, of quality content that Seth manages to put out. Better known as Saffron Olive, yeah. Turn one dork here would be nice. Right now I just want to hit lands. Might even Sylvan Library over Cobra, depending on what we draw. No land number two. Yeah, I mean, it's, right now it's generating the same amount of mana as this Lotus Cobra would, right? And then it could do a lot better than that later on. Sylvan Library, like, we play out the Rift Fellows, they probably kill it. Sylvan Library does a really good job of giving us a chance to hit our lane next turn. If we do that, then we can go Garrick on tap, Rift Fellows. the Rufellos here. I am probably just going to be control magicking this Rampaging Ferocidon, but like, if we don't tap with Rufellos, maybe we play Whisperwood, and that's better. I 
Yeah, I like that the Riffellos gives me options. Civil Library could even, like, potentially find me a forest. Let me go up to seven mana. I like knowing that the Fire Blast is exiled. Oh, got a creature. Not a good one, but... Rattle Master Land. good this is looking. I'm a little bit worried about that shrine still. Playing get Glen makes me lose one down to eight, and then I lose one to the Whisperwood to go down to seven. the shrine upticks one, you know. So playing Glen here makes me dead to like a bolt in response. Looks like they didn't have one though. Successfully made a shrine on five, but they can't play any other spells. Thank you. 
prepared to go to damage. Phew. Yeah, so we need to try on Predator instead of, uh, what was it, Rafellos that one turn? Would have worked out way better. After that turn, though, I didn't really have a clear turn to slam Predator. It would have been the Control Magic turn, and I, th I think the Control Magic line worked out a lot better. Girl looks really good. Let's get Trophy in here. Trophy looks really important. What about Casualties of War? <laughs> Do we try and Casualties them? The thing is, if they're playing, if they're playing that stupid Mox, well, I mean, we might be able to like kill a creature and kill the Mox, kill a Koth or something. They might have Sulfuric Vortex too. Hey Tiberius, thanks for the sub. Thanks for the 31 months. Yeah, I want to cut Brainstorm. I don't want to be casting Cantrips against someone who's trying to idle on me. Yeah, Eidolon's an enchantment, too. That's a good Casualties of War. I kind of like this. A little something, something like that. Is Deed awesome against Mono Red? Deed's also awesome against Green Ramp. Have you seen a deck? Resembling that description on your screen right now. <laughs> Is Seraph good? Seraph might be fine. What would you cut for Seraph? I don't really want to cut Trigon Predator after that game. It's kind of the slaw, right? We could cut Eternal Witness. Let's cut Eternal Witness. I was thinking, like, Witness rebuy a trophy or something could be good, but it's not like we're trying to outgrind this opponent, right? Might as well play the 3 3 that grows. I like it. Peralza 1 3, sure. Fintorn, Fintorn Elves is a 1 1. Lotus Cobra is a 2 1. Crater Hoof is too large to calculate. You got it, came on. Yeah, I'm not looking to add two mana 1 3s to my deck, right? We already have a lot of early, early game plays. Stuff like boarding in like Fauna Shaman and Brawl and stuff to block, whatever. That's the sort of thing you should do if you're a control deck and your curve is warped to shit. And you're just like not doing anything in the early game. That's not really what our deck is. I wonder if they regret playing their land there. Cultivating control magic or Garrick. I think they both leave us one short. We're definitely control magicking. So I guess I just do this.
I mean, you take back the control magic, you're like dead to this Rabble Master, right? <laughs> right now, we're actually not dead. We are dead to um, them playing a burn spell, like any burn spell at all. Deads us. Let's see, if we cast Cultivate, it's two mana. Yeah, we could cultivate into Garrick. The issue being, then we have to tap the Fintorn Elves. But we'd still have three blockers. I think I want to do that. Okay, that's not a burn spell. Can we get a whiff on this abbot, please? That's a prowess trigger. I think we got him, folks. Pretty important cultivate there, huh? Fire Blast? This would be a ridiculous slow roll Fire Blast, yeah. I guess the Copter could loot into it. Jeez. But they'd have to... They'd have to know enough to ping me for two here. Hmm. Interesting that they're playing around specifically hoof to kill them. Fair enough. That's the round. Yeah, but they're not dead on board. Dorax. And we're dead if they get to untap. So it's like weird for them to throw away creatures. Unless they're specifically playing around a crater hoof that's in my hand. That was my thought. the copter blocks, they get to loot with the copter, and they could find a uh, fire blast. So it's a line that they only know to play towards if they're, they want to play around a hook that's in my hand. Mm. Otherwise, it's probably better to have more creatures to like not throw away two creatures for two damage. Yeah, we're still gonna huff. They do just have a 1 in 27 chance, but I'm gonna think here for a second. If there was another swamp left in the deck, we could actually Uro into Bloodstained Mire and then uh, and then prevent the Fire Blast as an out, but our only land is Overgrown, which would shock us and would be life neutral with Uro. Hoof is a reasonable last card in hand. It is. But would you play your... Do you think you have your opponent has, like... If you throw away two creatures, you're playing towards Fire Blast specifically, right? You're playing towards a 1 in 27 chance. If you do that... Whereas you have a better chance of winning the game... If you don't throw away your board, you're, like, less likely to... 
die to like a removal spell. Yeah, the Garrick does get does let me untap lands here. Let me think here for a sec. One, two, three, four, five, six mana. Garrick untaps two is eight. Maybe that does work. Anyway, it might be totally reasonable to play around, but it's not an intuitive line if I was in their position. Plus three, it's four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, eight. I guess even if I miscounted, we could just shock ourselves. Ace or Jigglesworth, thanks to the 30 months. Fire Blast like six times. The possibility they can they loot. Whenever it attacks or blocks, they loot. We know they have Fire Blast in their deck. That's what you're missing. The card that I mentioned. Have been talking about. Hey P Smith takes the eleven months. You cat loves watching me? Awesome. We certainly had lethal, but that's not why we were playing Dero. Yeah, the math is real simple. There's a basic swamp in the deck. Because that's like another plus two mana or whatever, but Garrett got us there. I guess even if we were one short, we, could, we still could have fetched an overgrown tomb and play tapped and just not, not shock self too. And then the elf could attack, not that we needed. 